Should we get the kick? Welcome to Process Party. Uh, should we start now or should we wait? Should we wait? How long is that going to take, you think? Start now. I just. <laughs> 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 that, all right well the public has spoken uh, well okay we're we are you're right we are four minutes into the thing <laughs> hello hey who wants the clicker uh, i'll take the clicker sure and what do i point at do i point at anything? anywhere it's bluetooth baby. whoa cool Cyber. Uh, if you have questions, please step into the microphones on the side if there's time for Q&A at the end so our lovely audio, video recording can pick them up. Um, Take it away. Over to you guys. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Process Party. This is a podcast. The only um, podcast. The only podcast hosted by myself, Mike Dawson. And, and myself, Zach Soto. And this is a show where we talk to cartoonists about the cartooning that they do. Uh, and we have joining us for this hour, or less, slightly less than an hour, because of all the time we wasted, um, <laughs> Josh Cotter. Hey, Josh Cotter! <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Josh is very well known for uh, Skyscrapers of Midwest, published by Ad House, and more recently, Not Away, published by Fanographics. And Driven by Lemons was, was that... It was, right. at, it was at Ad House. Okay, cool. I mean, nobody knows about that one. Also. Well, yeah. <laughs> you just skipped over that one. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome, Josh. Thanks for, thanks for coming down to do this panel. Thanks, thanks Mike. <laughs> <laughs> very, very kind of you. Yeah. Uh, we thought we would start, actually, by uh, just showing uh, uh, some of the slides that we do have of Josh's work. And then we're going to go into a conversation about uh, his working habits and, and what's been going on with him and not away. Yeah, and Josh, TV. Can sort of tell us what we're looking at. Um, oh. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so, we, we have here. <laughs> this is the, uh, the black and white ink drawing that was used on the cover of Skyscrapers of the Midwest, the, uh, the hardcover collection that came out from Madhouse in 2008. That's a page from... The, well, uh, these are pages. <laughs> <laughs> the Skyscrapers, uh, you had done as a mini-comic in uh, the beginning, right? Skyscrapers began as a self-published book, a mini-comic, yeah. Uh, I, I worked at a uh, printing company, and it was a slow season. And before that, my mini-comics uh, were all Xerox, and one of the web presses was just sitting there unused. So okay. I approached my boss and said, can we... Can you print comics on this? Because they did, you know, ma you know, pamphlet type things, and he's like, "Well, well sure, why not? As long as you pay for it." Okay. So I, I had is the first comic I ever paid to produce. Oh, you had to pay so for you, it because you, the Xerox <laughs> machines. I, 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 I knew how to operate those, but I didn't know how to operate the, the, the press. So I had to actually pay. Well, they had made like plates and stuff and everything too, right? For yeah. The, like so, yeah, the mini comics. Uh, so that the, these so so you actually did you skip over like the Xerox stage of mini comic? No, I did with a fun, my first series was called Fun. It was a three it was oh, a okay. three three book. Not many people have seen it. I've maybe fifty copies of each. Is that it. like your Floyd Farland? Like you'd burn it if you see it. Nobody, kind of yeah, but no, but it, I won't even see it. Like <laughs> basically, friends and family have read it. Nice. Um, but uh, that was all Xerox sneaking into um, you know the. Uh, the copy room at night and uh, doing a guerrilla style, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Skyscraper started as a uh, self-published mini comic, and then the uh, first issue was um, uh, it won in the Isotope Award for mini comics in 2004. That was the award that used to be associated with Alternative Press Expo. Uh, associated right? with Ape, yeah. And uh, they had me out, and it was uh, it was pretty exciting because it was the first time that I, I'd ever really gotten recognition for my work beyond. Friends and family, okay. um, and then I so I was I was motivated by that, and I I created the second comic rather quickly within like two or three months. Really? Uh, because Mocha was coming, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna you know see if I can build build on this, and I I I. I, I it was one of those situations where I was stapling on the way to the airport, but um, I, I had enough copies to bring out there, and I had a table, and I was I was standing in line to I think speak to uh, Adrian Tomane, and. Uh, this guy was standing next to me, and it was uh, Chris Pitzer. Okay. And I didn't know who he was, but uh, he had heard of the Isotope Award and uh, that I'd, I'd won it, and I had some copies in my hand. He's like, did you make that? And I was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, can I have a copy? And <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And uh, he emailed me a couple weeks later. 
and asked if I'd be interested in working with them. And by that point, I, I, I really wasn't familiar with a lot of uh, what was going on in the comics, especially the independent comics world beyond beyond uh, fanographics, stuff that I had been interested in because of Ware, Klaus, and uh, other, other guys like that. But I, I looked into Ad House, and they were, he was uh, doing really well, really well um, with this anthology, Project Telstar, that he had done. And... Um, the, the production quality was incredible, and he sent me some stuff, and I was, I was really kind of blown away with the amount of uh, effort he put into making a nice-looking book, and I was, I was very, very happy to be working with Chris. I think Project Telstar was a book that, uh, I think it was like one of the first times that like alternative cartoonists were like, you know what, it's fun to draw superheroes. Yeah, well, that was, that, that was the sci-fi one. That was super, oh, yeah, 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 super, super Project superior. Superior was the next. Oh, yeah, sci-fi. So Chris did, Chris uh, Pitzer, uh, most people may know is the publisher of Ad House uh, books, um, and it, the first few things he did were these anthologies that were sort of all-star alternative cartoonists of the era. Um, I was in one of them or two of them, uh, so you know it's got to be great. Um, but uh, but then he of course like branched out and he's been doing. He became well known because the anthologies though, because they were well curated yeah. and, and and beautifully done. Um, and uh, he's he really built on top of those. He did Telstar Superior, and then the final one was Romantic, Project Romantic. And he stuck with three because Chris really likes numbers. And he likes trilogies. He likes trilogies, <laughs> yeah. So he decided to cut it off there. And then and at the time, in the early 2000s, a lot of anthologies started coming out. And um, he didn't really feel it was necessary to saturate the market any more than ours. So he got the first two minis and then talked to you about publishing. And then what we have here is this... You guys started reprinting the minis, it's right? It's a little convoluted, but yeah, for the first issue, we decided to take the first two minis and and collect them into one issue. Okay. And then uh, he, we were like, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll do a couple more issues of skyscrapers and see where it goes from there. And um, that's that's a sketchbook piece. Yeah, I think okay. we already blazed Is this through all the skyscrapers okay. images. Okay, so um, well, let's look, we can move on. To yeah, we can book. move on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, so. Um, and then as time went on, um, four seemed like a nice number, and I could do one issue for each for a season. And, um, and you ruined Chris's trilogy. Uh, I did, I did, thing. but he was uh, he was okay with going one more. Okay. And uh, <laughs> oh. uh. <laughs> and then um, we decided to collect them, and I don't know, it just started. It all went kind of fast, but people seemed to respond more and more positively as the series went on. So this book here. Uh, th which is the ten-year skyscrapers of the Midwest? Yes, it's got like a nice hardcover that Chris put, put together. Yeah, Chris, Chris, uh, is that ten years since, it in. since the book came out? It's ten years since the hardcover came out in two thousand and eight. Jesus yes. Christ! So. Where is time going? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we did a slipcase and then a, a special uh, thirty-two-page. Uh, New a book with comics and uh, photographs and pinups and stuff in it. That specifically is a lot about where is time going. Yeah, the, the yeah, comic exactly. The new it thing. Is. It's really great. It's a funny little story. Did you read it already? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I like to be. It prepared. is. I, I figured. Way, I figured. I'd, I'd try to find a way without being too nostalgic or saccharine about it, and uh, it, was, it was fun to write, revisit it in a way without actually you know writing any new stories within about childhood or uh trying to compete with the main book itself yeah so um you are an extensive sketchbooker i used to be um it i i tend i tend to sketch more when i'm going through um things it, it helps me work work uh work out my troubles uh so i i'm not as much of a sketchbooker as i used to be um because uh, life is relatively pretty good right now. And, <laughs> and I'm putting most of my time into uh, Not Away, and I find that when I'm in the middle of uh, a large book, I don't sketch nearly as much, because if I'm drawing, it's usually on the book itself. Right, or like just like planning, Pla planning preparatory yeah, things. Yeah, stuff, or... stuff that I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it, it is my means of expression, so uh, I don't need to work out so many problems with uh, just, uh, you know, journaling or whatever you want to call it. So some of these next images are from uh, another book that Ad House published called Driven by Lemons. Uh, a lesser work, according to my <laughs> but, 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 uh, it's actually, but that was like also like sort of influenced by your sketchbook work, it, right? Well, yeah, I, was sketch, I, was sketch, I was going through a divorce in the late 2000s, uh, and I was uh, major depressive, so I was having a lot of trouble just dealing with, you know, 
the things that life was throwing at me, which is, you know, it's not an uncommon thing. But the, I'd, I'd found that by riding in skyscrapers, it helped me deal with a lot of my problems I had with childhood. So I was like, I was really having trouble getting out of this depression. So I was like, well, maybe if I start writing about this, it'll help me get out of this. And I, I just bought a sketchbook and started filling it up, and a, a story started coming together about what I was going through. It's it's definitely more abstract in nature, uh, but it but uh, to me, I know what the story is, but um, it's it's uh, it's fairly non-objective um, um, uh, as far as visually or or as far as uh, content goes. But uh, in the end, it, it it did it did. I I felt. I you felt, feel like it did the job. It did. It, strangely enough, it, <laughs> it did the job, and I was and I, I the six months I put into it, I felt much healthier afterwards. Do you do you go to therapy? I went a few times and it never worked for me. Yeah, uh, it's uh, I have my my skull's too thick. I have an impenetrable sure. uh, head, so I just I I went to th I tried therapy a few times and it just didn't work on me. But I found that the most effective thing I can do is draw uh, draw whatever problem I have, draw it away, and and it really works. The thing was driven by lemons. I mean. Um, one of the things, aside from its lesser uh, it's, it's status, less status, yeah, <laughs> that would be a lesser word. It uh, like so many of the pages are like, wow, like it's like it's so much like time it's and pattern more than it, some of the yeah. other books I've worked on, Mike. Or well, I was gonna go say on? it's actually into the now <laughs> into weird, not away. Backhanded like, <laughs> compliments left and right. Uh, well, I was gonna ask the question was gonna be, being that you obviously were working on the sketchbook and like I was spending a lot of time on a lot of these pages and it specifically was for mental health. How does it feel when people come up and like, wow, look at that crazy thing, look at that, like it's amazing. Yeah, and I, I, I do, I do get like, this is crazy. I'm like, yeah, technically <laughs> it is, and uh, yeah, but I, I'm okay with that because it is. I mean, I, you know, it's. Uh, I realize that a lot of a lot of people don't have that experience personally, so it's maybe, maybe not easy for them to see, or I don't know for anybody to see. I don't know, but but as far as like. That was my personal experience yeah. with with mental illness, um, but turning a mental illness into a, a, a visual thing, uh, all they can do. My child is waving at me. Hi, coaching. <laughs> um, um, if they react good. that way, then I, I guess it's I guess it's the appropriate reaction because yeah. it is a visual representation of of uh, mental difficulty. You took a break from comics after that book, right? Well, I uh, after. Um, after Not Away, I, I started. I had been taking notes uh, on the side while working on skyscrapers and and driven by lemons, and uh, things that didn't necessarily fit into the skyscrapers universe. So I started compiling them after Driven by Lemons, and the story started taking form. And it was uh, it was becoming. It started out as anthropomor anthropomorphic characters like skyscrapers, and I, I realized it was like a like a post apocalyptic story, and I realized it just wasn't quite working. So, I started finding human characters in in what I was writing, and uh, it started coming together. And I, I and I had a good idea of uh, where it was going, and I, I called it Not Away. And uh, I worked on that for a couple of years, just writing here and there, but I didn't do a whole lot. And okay. I was actually in 2010. I was getting close to the point where I was going to start drawing it um, or start thumbnailing it anyway and uh, we uh, had an apartment fire my wife my now wife and uh, then girlfriend uh, our apartment caught fire the downstairs downstairs neighbor accidentally set their uh, oil paint and turpentine turpentine on fire with a candle and it um, it threw me way off uh, track and uh, I um, we had to move we had to figure out what to do we we eventually built a house and you know, before I knew it, two years had passed, and I'd barely done anything. And I, I'm, I'm a person that really needs routine and comfort in order to, to well, not comfort necessarily, but uh, it, with something more uh, structured, like not away or skyscrapers in the Midwest, I need that structure in order to function. And I didn't have it for a couple of years. Well, so that like how far into? So you you were into working on not away when that fire happened how far into like the writing process were you and then i i felt that i was derailed. at a point where i could start i had character uh i hate to say design but i knew what characters looked like i knew i knew where the story was going i had i had time changes mapped out i had um it wasn't quite what it is today and i think in a way it's fortunate that i was derailed because after i came back in 2012 and started like looking at it again i found where i could uh, improve on some things so so something i want to touch on right right off the bat with the difference between your your first couple books and uh not away is like the obvious difference is that like i mean they're all um they're all like really um
complicated in various ways, right? Um, but not a way um, is like the most straightforward uh, as far as like it's a it's a more of like a, a it's a genre narrative in some ways at least, and it's um, so it, far. It it yeah, it, it, I, I assume yeah. <laughs> there's probably more to come, but I mean it has like some very like like it's a science fiction comic. I'm setting I'm setting up a very I'm setting up something that people are familiar with in order for them to to bring them into the stories. So I, I'm, I'm hoping to give a base where people feel like they're in a world that makes sense before I start introducing things that don't make sense without giving way too much in the story. Um, it's uh, right now it, it is I'm working within the confines of science fiction, but I, I personally do not feel as a science fiction story and I think as more volumes come out as I age more oh, sure. and more because uh, it takes me th three or four years for each book unfortunately. And there's how many books gonna there's going to be seven. Seven books yeah. don't do it small <laughs> <laughs> at least it's not your first project no, yeah. <laughs> but uh, and, and I'm sure, I'm, sure I'm, I'm, I'm not doing myself any favors by doing something so large but uh, the more I wrote the more just this made sense as to how I needed to do it so um if we uh, can, you sort of talk about. I can't tell you too much about what's going on without uh, sure, giving things but away. But is it is a uh, I w working on skyscrapers, which is which does have fantastic elements, but more rooted in the real world. And where driven by lemons was almost entirely psychological. I I, I took things from both experiences and tried to bring them into Nottaway. So there will be elements of uh, of the inner psychological world, and they will the book will increasingly be more like this as, sure. as, as, as we progress. So, yeah, so uh, for the listener, mm -hmm. we're looking at a, I would say, a psychedelic uh, uh, invasion or something along those lines. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's in the head of the character that's floating on the bottom. Right. Um, I, I, I haven't revealed his name yet, but, uh, and, uh, but I don't know how much I can say without spoiling. Yeah, you don't, spoiling. yeah, that's yeah. fine. But I just thought it was interesting because because it, it is you're right it's like just reading the one book you sort of it starts off in sort of 2001 a space odyssey territory and then you um, and that's that's keep what pulling I'm pulling out yeah I, I I don't know that's that's what I'm trying to do is just you know give give like I said give the reader uh, some sense of uh, stability and 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 def de defining world before I uh, before I start messing with. Them a little bit. I have to say, has anyone, everyone in the audience, seen Not Away? Like, uh, like it's not like a little book. I mean, it's, a, it's very big. Yeah, it's not. This is, when he I'm, says like I'm going to make seven of these, it's yeah. like oh, <laughs> I, well, it's okay. probably, I'm estimating it's probably going to be around 1,800 pages once it's all said and done. Um, and I, I, I'll be sitting there drawing like, what the hell am I doing to myself? <laughs> but I, I, it's a story I want to tell, and it's a, it's a, I would the reason the reason it took me so long between uh, Driven by Lemons and Not Away is like since it is so large and and I'm going to be spending so much of my life on it. I wanted to make sure it was worthwhile, and I wanted to make sure it was going somewhere, uh, you know, and I'm not pulling a lost, uh, you know, type thing where everybody gets to the end and and they're and they're incredibly divided. And the ending of Lost is the best part, and, and that's and that's like, and then and, and Zach feels that way, and then Mike is the opposite, and, I, and, I, and I'm. I want to make sure I don't create any situations. Right. Are those like uh, thumbnails right there? Is, is that for those, Not Away? Those are thumbnails for Not Away. My thumbnails used to be much tighter for skyscrapers, but um, one thing I found is I can I can uh, keep loose and still uh, achieve what I need to. But uh, I, I, the thumbnails, I, I don't know if there were any images that we probably blew through them, Zach. Hey, that, I, what, do we, need, we don't need to go through every no. single one. <laughs> there, so here, here's a... A blue pencil. That's uh, I, do, I do everything. I, all my pencils are as finished as possible because while uh, I'm just not the most confident inker, I, I, I really admire people who can just put pen to paper and come up with something. But I've I've even with I, I and I did do that in a way with uh, Driven by Lemons. But I have to be doing something different with content uh, when I do that. Uh, I, I, I guess I, maybe it's my illustrator illustration background where that comes from, where I feel more confident if the pencils are. Are nearly finished before I move on to the next layer. Yeah, so like these these thumbnails are about as spare as it gets. Um, they're like circles and. I think the, I think the more I work, the more I'm able to just do that, and it, uh, not, maybe not many other people can read them, but it's you know it's gotten down to the point where it's all I need. To well, as long them. as you have the roadmap, it yeah, that's it. It, it serves its, serves its uh, purpose. Is my voice 
Am I very monotone? Am I am I driving <laughs> the place with my voice? I, I feel you should like, modulate. Just modulate. Up, it's just, a like, very good way to there work. You, there there you go. go. Just my, I'm so I'm so sorry. I have a monotone voice. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You're a cartoonist. You don't have to like be. You know. I'm I'm, I'm just afraid of too much David modulation Letterman or something. Yeah. Um, well, so <laughs> so as Zach, Zach mentioned, uh, like this book. Uh, is seems very uh, narrative, like narrative oriented. Like it's uh, it's it's characters. It's like it's funny. It's uh, like you know, there's good. There's yeah, there's little jokes in it. Yeah, like it's really well written. The yeah. dialogue is really. I'm disappointed to know it's going to get all weird. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna. I don't want to get so weird that it's going to lose audiences. But I, but I want. I want to. I definitely want to explore some more things that, if I'm going to get an audience to follow along with me, I need to give them. You know some breadcrumbs and along the way and I, I do I do I will be dipping into the weird but not so much that I'm going to lose people I, it's my intention anyway yeah. um, so when you write uh, characters do you I think I heard like you do script some of this right this I scripted quite a bit uh, actually yes uh, not uh, skyscrapers are not a way we're both very heavily scripted and, uh, driven by lemons not at all but, but like, uh, so you're not like creating the dialogue in the moment, like when you're on a page. Well, I, 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 I without without uh, going through the whole process because uh, or talking about it too much because it's lengthy and, and not very interesting. I, 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 I do. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's the lengthy. That's not interesting. How do you sharpen process. your blue pencil? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do. Little, I start. I start with gathering ideas. Very. It's very loose, and I do. I rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and tighten. I, maybe. By the time it gets to not away, I've or to the actual pencil to paper, I've rewritten it five times, and oh. and the and the dialogue comes in the fourth or fifth time, um, and some before, but and then so I have pretty tight dialogue by the fifth rewrite, and when I uh, put pencil to paper, uh, I find that a lot of it stays the same, but I'll, when I when I get characters into a situation with each other, or if the composition of the um, the panel allows for more dialogue or less dialogue, I find it changes then. Yeah. Or, but just having characters uh, that you work with that kind of come to life, uh, they develop a life of their own, and you find things they may say to each other, with, and it's not something you can necessarily plan ahead of time, but as long as it still um, uh, serves the narrative, yeah. it's uh, it's okay for me to change, make changes along the way. It's not so rigid, I can't change it. Yeah. So, um, like, behind us here, is, is this an actual page, or is this just... The studies. This, this, is, studies. this is my idea of character studies. I, I go through... I, yeah, this is... Because uh, you have, like... like you're designing a character, well, I wanted to but then you're like, oh, here's a, pa a scene and in inset into it. Yeah, I was, I was trying to create this. This, this is a, a woman in the uh, second volume named Aveline. I was like, okay, what, what, what makes you know? Like, there's this, there's the, this dark haired dark eyed type archetype of, of beautiful woman, and I was like, so what makes this work? So I found some old illustrations and and uh, cartooning of uh, that I. I uh, things like okay she's beautiful well, what makes her what you know in that way what what makes her beautiful so i did some studies because um i i kind of need reference at first in order to get a uh, feel down for a character uh, maybe i'll think of an actress or an actor a lot of a lot of characters in the first volume were loosely based on you know like what if i cast this person in this part if it okay. was a show and i don't i don't draw them as they are but like that what makes them this way? What what height? What form? Like you know, a squarish head. A you know. You're talking about Inspector Dawson now, aren't I'm you? Talking, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, and, and that's why. I, that's yeah. There's, there's a there's is, there's is the a Mike Dawson character. Is in it there? the mesh shirt? Is it the uh, what is it that makes what is it that makes the character who they are? And just the main character is Mike Dawson. <laughs> there is an Inspector Dawson in the book because I thought it would be uh, I needed I needed a good cop and Mike makes a good cop, so I cast Mike in the part. I asked him, is that okay? And then I and Jim Rugg's the bad cop, and it doesn't look at all like Jim, but it's uh, you know it, Jim Rugg and Mike Dawson make a good good cop. But you, well, know, you know Jim's one of the nicest guys you you can meet. No, he's angry. He is yeah, yeah, angry Jim. Jim. Yeah. Seething Jim Rugg, as they call. Him. <laughs> um, so, uh, and so these are other characters that. You yeah, know. and it's just uh, other. This is as close as I get to character design. I, I draw them a like few lesser. times. Try. Well, some of them are, are uh, yeah. These are not as important. These are secondary. Dawson. These are secondary characters uh, be, behind Mike. Uh, oh, is that it? That's it. No, okay. it is it. Oh, really? yep. Wait. Now we're in a different. Okay. Now we're in somebody else's. <laughs> Back to Kevin Bodnick. Um, no. Um, 
That's, but the images we just saw, that's about, maybe it crashed because it was over a gig. Uh, hmm. <laughs> but uh, that's about as far as I go with character design. And it's, it's to my detriment at times because I, I would, I, the only way I can get a character to look right is to draw them over and over again. And I feel like I just don't have enough time. So I jump into the book. And by the time I'm 200 pages in, which is where I, 220 pages at the moment, uh, they change, they morph over, over that, that many pages for me personally. Well, I'm not, not, to, not to be too complimentary, but I think it's actually one of the things that's remarkable about the book is the consistency. Well, uh, so I didn't notice. Thank, I wasn't you, thank you for saying so, but that's because I went back and correct. That's why I only. That's why I do all my pencils first. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so I take the compliment. Is, hey, we back. can talk about process right now. Okay. Uh, I, I I do all my pencils first, so I can go back and correct things. Just I mean, it usually just takes minor corrections. Yeah. But may, okay. Maybe maybe you're, maybe the character's forehead was a little too long at first, and it, it shortened over time. And when you're doing that many pages, you don't notice. But when you take page two hundred to compare it, compare it to page one, you're like, oh, you know, geez, this looks terrible. No, because I I did book one and I inked it as I went and it's true it is basically the characters change just like by the end I'm like oh that's a good way to draw that character <laughs> <laughs> you, you find you find it a, a few months in and then yeah and, and that's why I, I is I used to ink uh, more frequently as I as I went not as much as uh, like a whole book but um I, I would find that I'd just be wasting my time because then I'd just have to re-ink the whole thing it's easier to change things when they're in pencils okay um so Something uh, sort of unexpected when when I think about, say, fanographics artists or whatever um, that happened in the last couple of years is that uh, is that they, suddenly they announced that Not Away was gonna had been picked up for a HBO TV show. And I know you can't talk about. I can't. Yeah, it's, it's not, it wasn't even an official announcement because, like, re whenever I first mentioned it on social media, um, like a year ago, uh, another person that had been picked up by uh, I don't remember her name. She was a sci science fiction. You should author. break her uh, news too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, uh, she um, uh, she ended up uh, having a bunch of newspapers uh, contact her and start contacting HBO. And HBO wasn't happy because uh, it was, since it's at option level, it's not something they want to uh, really, you know, talk about yet. Right. So I, I, uh, I withdrew my announcement. I think it's okay to talk about it, but uh, if you are listening to this, do not contact HBO about it because <laughs> they, they will not be pleased. They'll be annoyed. Yeah, but it is, it is something we are working on. Um, they contacted me um, about a little over two years ago and um, asked if I'd be interested in working with them. And um, it took me a while to believe it wasn't some kind of like scam. Like they were just waiting for them to ask for my, uh, my debit card number or, you know, bank account number <laughs> or something, but it's, it seems legit. And it's in, it's in, uh, it's in pro process progress, but it's, uh, it's a, one thing I'm learning is it's uh, time moves totally different out there. And, what I would try to accomplish in comics in in um, a couple of weeks takes a couple of years. Right. Yeah. So. So um, just vaguely though, with that process, um, it, you know, you have like the seven book series. Have you have you written like a Bible for them? I had to write. Kind of I, I wrote a Bible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you were that worried is. about monotone. Now you, you're, you're going to be pretty. It's Jeez, sir, man, Mr. <laughs> uh, yes, I had to write. So there is there is a. Uh, <laughs> There is a Bible that I wrote for them um, that made me very nervous to give. Um, and uh, so there are other people now that know where the story is headed. Right. And at first they were going to market it as a space sci-fi story, but after they got the Bible, they realized that that's not how to market that's it. So not that's not exactly that's a, what it is. That's another... That's another I keep I keep trying to repeat. It's like yeah, it, I am working with in the genre of sci-fi, but it's not a sci-fi story. Right. But uh, it, it, I imagine even in the end, they have to market it somehow. They, sure. Because uh, people can't really handle not having a label on something, you know. Right. Yeah. But it is it is happening still. Uh, it's it, it could fall apart at any moment, but it's been an interesting process and um you know if it doesn't work out i'm i'm, I'm just gonna keep making so comments. how committed do you feel it wasn't like finished mike <laughs> <laughs> excuse me i <laughs> wanted more of a quackier voice <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like do you feel confident in the story as you've envisioned it that like someone so it, we work in comics and we're used to sort of you know small 
small fish kind of feeling. Right. So TV comes and I was like, oh, TV. Yeah, that's a little... It, Do you worry, did you have any worries then that they may sort of impact? Kind of like... Because like you said, you sent them a Bible. It wasn't, you know... Where the story was going? Like, did my it change own, my your own? No, no. I, 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 you I, worried I, they'd be like, okay, well, I will just change it. <laughs> and then, and, oh, and then know, Eminem is the star. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vanilla Ice uh, yeah, is, cool. is, on, is on board. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, more like the, your story. You wouldn't let them, like... My per- personally, it's in the contracts that they that nobody has any say in what happens to the books, and that was the most important thing to me. Is like I, you know, I've maintained creative control over my own work for so long, I I would not be able to handle something like that. Okay. But uh, I mean, obviously, with television, you have to change things. Uh, certain things in comics or, or literature don't work on television, and I understand that. Um, but um, yeah, and that's fine if they have to. But with the book, I'm I, it's no one has no one has any say but myself. So Fanographics is kind of famous for, I don't know if they're famous for, but they're known that you can work there and and receive a fairly minimal amount of editorial influence. That's their sub-motto besides World's Famous Cartoonists. <laughs> yeah. it's, yes. it's, it's a lengthy... Minimal it's a lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, so yeah. So that works for you? That's, it's, been been, for you? it's been great. No, uh, it, just like, you know, it's like no more than working with Chris has been that way. It's great. He just trusts me to do the work and uh, and he, you know, besides maybe catching a typo here and there, it's, you know, that's what it is. And Eric, I, I've been primarily been working with Eric Reynolds and, you know, I, I don't think I could be... Is it, I've just been so fortunate to be working with two of the nicest guys in in, in comics with Chris and Eric. I, you know, just Eric, he'll go through and and uh, you know notice weird punctuation or typos, but otherwise it's it's how I want it to be, and that, and that re- ultimately that is what means the most to me because. As as you guys may know, there's not a whole lot of money in comics, and that's the sacrifice we make for doing work that's more personal and uh, where we have more creative control. So just to shift a tiny bit to sort of like work-life balance kind of thing, you mentioned that you had uh, you'd lived in Chicago, you you had like a an apartment fire, and then. Because of that, is that because of that that you moved? You moved out to Missouri. Well, we were Momoko, my wife and I were considering moving somewhere because uh, her residency was about to finish, and I'd, I'd had a difficult time in Chicago. And as much as I liked the city, I was ready to try something else. But we were considering either moving back to Japan or move to the farm and uh, where I grew up because. Um, there's land there where we could have a house and a studio and actually afford to be artists. Uh, Japan, we probably would have been a little more, you know, uh, strapped for cash, okay. but, but it would have been nice. But was, so we looked into, uh, we had the fire, and uh, and uh, we immediately then had to figure out what we were going to do. And uh, with Japan, we were going to have to. Uh, I was I was going since we weren't married yet. I was going to have to get uh, sport uh, sponsorship, and I, I I talked to a few comics places and and, and comics museum manga museums, and it just uh, it was going to be a lengthy process, and we really didn't have time. So uh, we talked it over, and we decided to build the house and studio, or the house at first. We went over budget on the house as 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 those things go, but we just finished the studio a few months ago, and it's been great. And, so you uh, you're working in the studio. Now. We are now working in the studio, and it's uh, I was a little nervous. I knew what I was getting into, but I didn't know. About bringing my wife who is from Kobe to uh, Northwest Missouri how she would feel but it's uh it's been a great a great um, a great move um, we're, we're very happy and um, there's not a whole lot else there to do but you know raise children and and, and and make art but that's where we are in our lives so it's it's been great um, do you guys uh you're in the studio at the same time do you we, do we you, trade we trade back and forth with you the don't kids. go at the same time okay. well we, we have days where we can we, uh, the kids do daycare one day a week and or, or my son's in school now but um and then the grandparents live down the road we live on the same uh, 80 acres and uh, they watch the kids one day a week so we're those days we're able to work in the studio at the same time otherwise we trade on and off of on responsibilities it's nice. been it, it works out really well I don't you know it, it I don't get 40, 50 hours a week like I used to, but um, the time you do get, um, that's, you know, you make it, you make it, you make it last, you know, you, you, you put out your best effort in that time. You don't, He's you're more, more, more efficient with your time, yeah. <laughs> you. um, did you want to, should we ask if anybody has any questions? They can hear you. Well, <laughs> uh, does, can, actually, can maybe we should move to that. Does, yeah. anyone does have anybody any? have any questions? And if so, uh, make your way to the microphone. Or just yell. Or not. No questions. Well, that's awkward. Well, so... <laughs> <laughs> this year, 10, year, ten years of SPX or something, right? Like, 
So was no, I, I've well, the well, you own. you posted something about ten years on the floor. What was yeah, that? Yeah, that, because that, that picture was ten years ago. Where I I, I used to come, oh, I used to I come see. to SPX, and that would have been late two thousands, where I, I was going through my you know my my rough patch. So I would I would drink heavily, and which a lot of people do at SPX. Yeah, and I would uh, I would usually at some point the following day uh, pass out on the floor behind the and the table, and Chris would take pictures and stuff yeah, over me that's and, fair and kick me in the stomach every yeah. now and then. <laughs> but uh yeah so uh we did we did a 10-year anniversary of me uh passing out on the floor oh and that's then a photo and okay was, yeah i misread was, that i was like oh it's 10 years and then i'm but well, then it's probably but then that book's been out for 10 years so that wouldn't make sense it's probably because i didn't make myself clear yeah. I, I i'm i'm uh you mumbled I, online i mumble yeah and as an art and as an artist I, I i as a person that writes you would think i would be able to communicate a little more clearly mm -hmm. and that's not something i do i, I confuse people People constantly. Do you um, you don't come to that many shows anymore, right? I don't. I, I've cut down quite a bit. It's it's uh, taxing, you know, and uh, it's expensive. And I enjoy it. I love I love seeing people and, and having the opportunity to be here at SPX was 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 you know great. I love being here, but it's just uh, you know you get older you, you, and uh, it's just not as easy as it used to be. So what do you think we're like sort of like you, I feel like for all of us like small press shows sort of do have like a very important role to play like economically and sort of psychologically I would well, say Well when you're when you when you are a small press artist the, there's 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 hardly any publicity behind you at all I mean Fanographics has Jack and um uh, going and Ad House has Chris and he does all he can but it's really up to the artist to get out there and raise awareness of their own work right um, the, otherwise people I mean that's just part of being an independent artist or any kind of artist starting out is you have to make people realize that you exist because it's uh and then, of course, it's different with internet and stuff now. And, and and younger people come up and ask me like if I have any advice. I'm like, well, I, with the internet, I don't I don't know. It's different than how I started. But I I would say it still boils down to you do the work, and you try to find a way to make sure people know it's there. And um, that's just how it is. Yeah. Is that right, Zach? How do you feel about that? What kind of pen do you use? To make? <laughs> <laughs> Tachikawa ninety nine and seventy seven. Yes. So you're a, a dip, dip pen. I am a, I, am a, I am a dip pen. I use I use uh, Dr. P. H. Martin's uh, Black Star. Okay, I matte. use Black Star yeah. also. Black yeah. Star is one of the finest uh, things I got. You I use got high that. carb or matte? I use I use matte. Okay, and that's a recommendation from Feral Process Power Party. Report. Process Party. <laughs> And uh, and uh, yes, I use Tachikawa nibs. Which okay. Every time I go to Japan with my family, I buy as many as I can because nice. they're a lot cheaper there. So wait, is that like a is that like a G nib or something, or is that just no? Is it's it a much smaller. The like a, it's uh, the ninety nine is very similar to a Hunt one hundred two. Oh, okay. But it but it lasts a lot longer than a Hunt one hundred two. So it's the little circular ones and not the the concave ones. No, not the not this the like just very pointy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, when you when you stab yourself in the hand, it hurt really really hurts. Right. Yeah, I've bled. Because of my pitch. I decided that I would ask a question from the audience. <laughs> um, well, I hope that people will pick up the book because like, it is like it is a very entertaining book. Yeah, which like, driven by lemons, Mike? No, not driven by lemons. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to cry then, and yeah, drop a, acid, then <laughs> it's always strange to me that I mean, I guess it's not strange. I should expect it that people seem to associate my books with depression, but that's because I. I I am depressive, and I guess that really, well, comes, you, that really yeah. comes through. And I really, and that you really made no bones about the fact that all your work is about being depressed. Yeah, so it's yeah, weird I mean, that they think that. <laughs> yeah, how strange. Uh, it's very. I'm very. I'm a little oblivious at times. Like, why do people think I'm depressive? Oh, I write about it. Yeah. But uh, I guess that's maybe one of the reasons why I went the route I did with Not Away is I can still put myself into it, but tell stories about someone be, be a, besides myself and I think that's important it I you know memoir and uh, and uh, auto auto bio stories are, are a, a great way to tell a story but I, I I'd done it and um, I didn't you know the and then I don't even think that kind of storytelling is self-involved but I needed to tell stories about other people and and try to find ways to tell stories that maybe the that experiences that aren't you know necessarily directly my own so I steal them from other people. I read, I read, uh, I read online about what other people experience, and then I and then I, I write about that. Oh, really? No, not really. <laughs> not really. Not really. No, okay. Not at good. all. I'm sorry. I'm being facetious. I think that's how, like Kevin Smith, uh, your favorite writer. Uh, yes. He he uh, he will just take all of his his friends like 
smart ass remarks and then write them into his script. That's my dialogue. Yeah, that's so my yeah. That's, that, that's anything good. my kids say, I just write it down, and that's the dialogue. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and when they get to smart ass remarks, there we'll go. Um, so clearly we're at the... I think we're at the end, end. Uh, unless anyone does have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> we can keep doing okay. this. We, I, I can do this for another 14 that minutes. That was okay. Oh. I, think that's, I think that's fine. This is about the length of an actual podcast. <laughs> anyway. really? Well, the yeah. main part of it. We, we usually do a little bit of jibba-jabber at the beginning, but uh, we'll, do, we'll fill that in later. Uh, oh, there we go. Do you feel like there's uh, anything out there from a creator perspective, like any character, rock, like character hiding under a rock or you know, like Marvel could come to you with like something that would like make you take a break from Nottaway for a minute. Oh. Uh, like, totally outside of Nottaway. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, like with like what Pisker is doing with X-Men, I think, I think it's awesome what he's doing. And, you know, and I, I have, I have nothing against uh, what mainstream comics has done, you know, for comics in general, but, um, as far as a character that would be able to take it away, me away from Nottaway, it's very important I don't know what, I, what I'm doing is so important. It's it's. I mean, it's difficult enough for me to even spend time with HBO. Oddly enough, because I feel like it's t taking away from what I really want to do. And I just you know, and it, it's a, it's a it's a cool idea. And like I said, uh, what Pisker's doing as an example, I think is pretty awesome. Well, let's take but, that framing away of like. Well, let's say after not away when you're 80. Oh, okay. Um, and <laughs> and, 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 and my foot. yeah, and there, and there are still comics. Um, yeah. Sure. The, uh, um, uh, is there any like uh, kind of like a property like that? that would be yeah. interested? I I don't know. It, it, I think the most important thing with me through comics, even though like I said, I was writing with other characters and not a way. It's still it's still ex expressing myself and my and my personal philosophy. So um, doing that with someone else's intellectual property doesn't seem to be in line with what I want to achieve yeah and it's not to say i would never do it uh, just um it, nothing comes to mind um at the moment i do better are you are you off are you offering <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking the storytelling perspective like you're you're doing a lot of interesting writing and you know, like I, I it'd be cooler if the I thing was in it <laughs> yeah i mean i guess i guess if the right thing were presented to me i i would take into consideration uh if i could still because the the the, the, the the part of like how I draw is so tied into how I write, and um, I would it would still have to be related to how I how I work. Have Have you ever actually thought about? I mean, not necessarily for Marvel or DC, but have you ever? But like, because comics take so long. I know that I am like writing things for other people to draw. Have you ever thought about doing that, um, or is it the, all tied the, the, into the same with the same with collaborative work? I've 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 tried it in the past, and it just feels like. The, Part of the pro the par process count is dependent on the two aspects, and I could probably learn to do one aspect, which I have been an illustrator, and it's not comics, but illustrating uh, like editorial work. But it's also one of the reasons why I got away from editorial work is because it, my work wasn't strong because I was missing uh, something I needed in that. Um, so right now, as I work, both both aspects are necessary. Cool. Well, thank you. Oh, well. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, all right. Go ahead and use the, use the mic. Thank you. Sure. Um, I have to edit out all the parts where I say thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> and we're oh, okay. All right. Good. <laughs> um, I'm just sort of curious if um, are you sort of reading any other comics or watching movies or just reading experiencing any, any type of media that might be informing your current work or is. Does, does that factor into the creative process for you? Uh, not necessarily. I always take inspiration from what I'm reading, um, but what I read is is pretty random. I, I'm really into like I read I, I read comics more for the super. I mean, it's, it's sad to say, but more for the superficial qualities of the illustration and stuff. And uh, I, I like uh, Fanagraphics has been doing a lot of those EC reprints with just the black and white. And I'm really enjoying those and. Um, but that's more from for an illustration illustration reason. Uh, I don't watch much television. Uh, I have been more lately because since I'm working with HBO, I want to educate myself more on what's going on. Um, but I wouldn't say that I'm uh, doing it to inform my own work. I, the, uh, f film has has informed a lot, you know informed a lot of my work, uh, but I've. 
like say Kubrick or Coen Brothers, uh, et cetera, et cetera, have have really had an impact on my writing. Uh, and of course, I would never be a Kubrick or Coen. But as far as like how the, how the human is uh, central to the story, and uh, it's it's telling a humanist story. The and in, in that respect, uh, I, my work has been informed by others. Um, I mean, it's just like with any artist or writer, we we have our influences. But as far as what I'm currently reading. I, 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 yeah, I, I just when I'm when I'm working on a book, I, I don't do nearly as much reading as I as I usually do, and it, there is the danger of of um, being overly influenced by what you're consuming, and that and that leaking into uh, what you're doing, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Leaking, you know, leaking. Oh, I know a lot of people who le leak. <laughs> <laughs> Leaking is the word I'm looking for, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> but did that answer your question? Okay. But I, I, I do, I do read. I, I read. I, I read comics. I watch television. I, I am a normal movies. human. I'm. I am a human <laughs> being. I am just like you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm relatable. <laughs> yeah. Just look at me. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm happy to answer. Uh, oh. A very dense, unhelpful answer, but <laughs> uh, okay. Homework. No. Uh, <laughs> it feels. Well, right. It feels like a. It feels like that for the for the listener at home. Uh, We're gonna edit like half of this back oh, half off. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Uh, did, did, so you're you're at the ad house table here. Uh, yeah. For, for like one another, more hour. For another hour. I'll be at the ad house. Hour table. and ten minutes. We have we have a little early. Special edition. Uh, Fanographic still has uh, not away, and you know if you want to come by and say hey, I'll be there for a little bit longer. Nice. Thank you for coming, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for coming.